In this video, we're going to look at the final common uh, discrete numeric probability distribution that everyone should be familiar with, and this is the hypergeometric distribution. Now, the hypergeometric distribution, the name hypergeometric, it's a technical mathematical term dealing with uh, series and how terms in a series might be related to each other. So don't try to make sense of this dis uh, name of this distribution uh, whenever you're trying to remember what it's all about. Now it's very similar to the binomial distribution as we mentioned in an earlier video where you're doing something multiple times, you're doing multiple trials, but the big distinction between the hypergeometric and the binomial is that each trial's success depends on, or the probability of each trial's success depends on the success or failure of the previous trial. Each trial is not independent of the previous trial. Or you can think about it as sampling without replacement. Now the hypergeometric distribution probably the most famous uses or the most common uh, everyday sorts of uses for the hypergeometric distribution involve calculating probabilities when you're dealing with card games. Now with card games typically you have a deck of cards. Now with a standard deck of cards you have 52 and you deal people a certain number of cards at one time, five cards or 13 cards at one time, without putting the cards back every time you hand somebody a card. You don't get it back and then hand them a second card. You hand them five cards out of the deck all at once. And so this is the perfect uh, situation for the hypergeometric probability distribution. Here's what the probability distribution looks like. It's just three of these combinations formulas now, if, you, if you're not familiar with the combinations formula, watch my video on the binomial distribution. Uh, it's just three of these combinations formulas. On your calculator, it's the NCR key. And uh, here we have R choose X, N minus R over N minus X, or choose N minus X, and big N choose little N. All you have to do for the hypergeometric, this formula looks more complicated than it is, you have to identify four things. Let me give you a situation and then we can identify what these four things would be for that situation. A typical calculation involving cards. In a standard deck of cards we have 52 cards. I'm going to deal you five cards. So from 52 I'm going to deal you five cards. What is the probability of getting two queens. So what do we have to identify? Well, big N is the population size we're choosing from. How many are we choosing from in this situation? 52. Little N is the sample size. That's how many am I choosing from the population? In this case, that's Five. I'm dealing you five cards from the 52. R, little r here. This is probably the hardest uh, thing to think about for most people. R is how many successes are in the population. Now, if we're going to define a success as being two queens, how many queens are there in a standard deck of cards? There are four, so r is four. And lastly, we need to know what X is. How many successes would we like to happen that we'd like to calculate the probability for? And in this case, I'm asking what's the probability that there are two queens, so X is two. But X could be any number that is consistent with how many queens we could get. How many queens could we be dealt? Zero, one, two, three, or four, but not five because there are only four in the deck. So let's set this problem up and solve it. So with this formula here, we would say, okay, well, f of two, the probability of getting two is equal to three combinations formulas. R choose x, that's four choose two. 
So I'll write it this way, 4C2. That's the way you'd put it in in your calculator. Times n minus r, choose little n minus x. So big N minus r, 52 minus 4. So that's 48. Choose little n minus x. That's 5 minus 2, which is 3. And then we're going to put all that on the top of a fraction and then we're going to on the bottom do big N choose little n 52 choose 5 now let me simplify what we're doing here for you so that you can see uh, some patterns that will help you do this kind of problem I always check when I'm done that r, the number of queens in the deck, plus n minus r, that's the number of non-queens in the deck, equals 52, n, the total number of cards in the deck, right? So 4 plus 48 equals 52. Let me make this a little bit bigger, probably on some people's screens. This is, this is hard to look at. So 4 plus 48 equals the 52 total cards. X is 2. We're looking for 2 out of the 5 cards that were being dealt to be queens. And the N minus X, these are just the cards we're going to be dealt that are not queens. So 2 cards that are dealt will be queens. 3 will be non-queens. The 2, we're choosing 2. We're choosing 3. We're choosing 5. The 2 and the 3 has to equal the 5. What the hypergeometric formula is doing here is separating out the two types of cards we're going to be dealt. Everything in this combinations formula is about the queens. There are four queens, four successes in the deck. We're going to be dealt two of them. Everything here is about the failures, the non-queens. Out of the deck there are 48 non-queens. Deal me three of them. And on the bottom this is out of the 52 cards total we're going to be dealt five cards so that's a way to check to see if you've done everything right now when you're doing these kinds of problems you probably just want to leave the numbers in your calculator uh, rather than writing them down because that's going to be very tedious and just keep the numbers in your calculator and multiply them. now pause the video and try this and see what you get and we'll see if it matches up with my calculation so when you do these combinations formulas and multiply the top and then divide by the bottom, you get 0.0399298. This tells us that there's an approximately a 4% chance that somebody can deal you five cards and that you have exactly two queens out of those five cards. And again, you can try this with any number for X as long as it's a number that's possible. You cannot use five because you cannot be dealt five queens uh, when there are only four in the original deck. Now another common use for the hypergeometric distribution is to uh, figure out the probability of winning lotteries or matching certain numbers of balls in lotteries, but only if it's a lottery that's kind of like dealing cards from a deck, where you have one big bucket of balls with numbers on them that are being drawn and then you draw four balls out of the bucket at the same time without replacing them uh, where each draw is is dependent on the other one so that's a inter an introduction to the hypergeometric distribution try some more of these on your own uh, so that you can get more confidence in calculating these good luck Uh, one other thing that I, I should mention to, to give a complete treatment of the hypergeometric here is that if you have a hypergeometric distribution and the outcome is counting up how many 
queens you get, how many successes you get in this kind of situation. If you wanted to calculate the average, so when you deal me five cards on average, how many queens will I get? Then the expected value, which is just a, uh, another word for the long run average, you can get by taking the little n times r over n, which is just saying, you know, if you're dealing me five cards, multiply that times the four out of 52 queens in the deck, and that will calculate the average number of queens that you're going to get when you get dealt uh, five cards. And you can also calculate the variance. This, the variance is, is uh, quite uh, more complicated with more terms, but if you just take this step by step, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. So to calculate the variance, if you wanted to know the standard deviation of the number of queens you get in five cards, you can just fill in these terms with small n, capital N, the population size, and R, the number of successes in the population, and that will give you an idea of, well, not an idea of what the population variance is. It'll give you exactly what the population variance is for the problem that you're studying.